Hello, my name is Jim Downs. I'm a field specialist in forestry for Ohio State University Extension. And today I am in southeastern Ohio out to Vinton Furnace State Experimental Forest where I'm going to be introducing butternut, also referred to as white walnut. To begin with, the, the leaves of white walnut um, are pinnately compound. They will have somewhere between 15 to 25 leaflets per leaf. The one distinguishing feature between white walnut and black walnut is that the terminal leaflet or the leaflet out on the end of the rachis will tend to remain on the tree uh, for white walnut, whereas with black walnut, it will tend to fall off. Another difference between the two is the individual leaflets tend to be a little bit more round on white walnut compared to a little bit uh, thinner on that of black walnut. Both will have uh, fairly fuzzy leaflets that are going to be finely serrated along the edge of the leaf. When we look at the, the buds and the twigs of white walnut, the terminal bud of white walnut and all the buds will be uh, naked, meaning that they don't have scales. They're going to be fairly lengthy, actually a little bit longer than that of black walnut, but they'll be a silvery or white color and uh, rather fuzzy. The leaf scars of white walnut will look like that of a monkey face. The one key difference between the leaf scars of white walnut and that of black walnut is that there will be some fuzziness, uh, basically where the eyebrows would appear on the face of the monkey for white walnut, whereas black walnut, you won't see that fuzzy, fuzzy eyebrows. The bark of white walnut is somewhat smooth and fissured. The outer plates of white walnut is where this tree gets its name uh, because from a distance, this tree can look fairly white because of those smooth plates that are on the, the bark. The fruit of butternut is much more of an elongated fruit than that of black walnut, much more of a uh, football shape. And the outer texture of the fruit is very different from that of black walnut as well. You have these uh, really irregular ridges that run on the outer part of the husk. Part of where this tree gets its name, butternut, is from the, the nut that is inside here because it has somewhat of a, a buttery taste and actually has a little bit more oil in it than that of black walnut. These fruits are highly desired by a number of wildlife species and they're also edible to people. Butternut is not nearly as common today as it once was, um, and that's because primarily in the 1960s, uh, this tree began being impacted throughout much of its range by a canker disease. And so from New York down to South Carolina, over to Arkansas and up into Minnesota, uh, we've lost probably about 80% of our butternuts. And as a result of that, this tree is listed as a species of concern by the federal government. One of the interesting uh, things that was conducted here at this particular forest was in the early 1950s, and again, that would have been before this canker disease was uh, isolated in the United States. The uh, survey made note of the fact that there were a lot more butternuts scattered across the landscape at least here on this forest, compared to that of black walnut. And that's certainly something that we don't see today. Uh, we certainly see a lot more black walnuts uh, scattered across the landscape compared to butternuts. This canker disease, um, we're not entirely sure, but we believe that it originated outside of the United States. With that, thank you for watching and have a great day.